This conference will now be recorded. Good morning, everybody. Today, we are going to discuss about the practical supplied exercise, egg inoculation. What is the importance of egg inoculation in virology? The egg inoculation is a, nothing but a, the, you have to grow the viruses in the embryonated eggs. Embryonated eggs. You have to grow the viruses. Actually, the virus won't survive outside. They will grow only in the cells, human cells, or tissue cells, or animal cells. They utilize the human cells and they will grow. That is why we have to provide some environment. Then only the viruses will grow. The eggs are the best the, for the growing of the viruses because the eggs are living cells. The embryonated egg means it is a living cell. In the only living cells only, the viruses will grow. Not only in the living cells. Eggs like and living cells like eggs, but others uh, cells like human animals uh, like uh, other uh, any animal, the chimpanzees and ducks uh, and other um, suckling mice, uh, etc. Any animal cells will grow apart from the human cells. Now the others apart from that, uh, um, the animals, uh, the embryonated embryo, the viruses, uh, the eggs, uh, which contains uh, embryo, they are the best for the growing of the viruses how the viruses will grow in the embryonated egg we have to inoculate the some inoculum we have to inoculate the some inoculum which contains some bacteria some virus some infected material we have to inject into the embryonated egg and incubate it particularly these eggs are not a routine eggs they are embryo they are living cell living embryo should be there in the egg living embryo Living embryo should be there, then only the virus will grow. It may be some you know, five days, ten days old, egg, only the virus will grow. The virus, the living cell will be there in that embryo, uh, egg. That is why the viruses will, um, yeah, will increase, replicate and grow in the embryonated eggs. Here, the egg inoculation, it is uh, important for the students, not only for undergraduates, it also for the postgraduate students for the evaluation of the the replication of the viruses in the living cells. The students should develop the necessary skills to be familiar with the exercise in the virology. It is an applied exercise question. We have to tell what type of viruses will grow. There are different viruses, DNA viruses, RNA viruses, etc. Sometimes uh, some bacteria also will grow in the embryonated X. See, the viruses are different from other microbes. Suppose if you see the viruses are uh, compared with the other microbes, these viruses are different. I, the viruses are obligate intracellular parasites. They will grow only in the living cells. They will grow only in the living cells. They are not outside the cells. That is why they are called as the viruses are called as obligate intracellular parasites. They depend totally on their host cells for their existence. They won't grow outside. They depend totally on their host cells for their existence. Their total host dependence makes it extremely difficult to get a good insight of them natural conditions because the internal characteristics of the host cells are likely to interfere with the observations. Due to these reasons, it has been found desirable that the viruses are cultivated or grown in the laboratory itself. We have to grow in the laboratory by using this embryonated eggs. Sometimes tissue cultures, the viruses will grow in the tissue cultures. We can grow. We have to you know, inject into the animals various animals so that uh, the viruses uh, will multiply in these uh, living cells we multiply in the living cells not suppose if you see the bacteria bacteria will grow in the culture media like blood agar medium chocolate agar medium and mcconkey's agar medium it is not a uh, the living medium it is an animate medium it is a and the viruses uh, won't grow in this uh, blood agar mcconkey chocolate agar etc the why because the viruses are living they will grow only in the living cells that is why we have to use living cells for the growing of the viruses. We have to use living cells only, like uh, the embryonated eggs uh, and animal experiments. 
animal expense, human animals, various animals we have to use. The rabbits, guinea pigs, chimpanzees, and certainly mice, etc. We have to use for the growing of the viruses. We have to observe the pathogenicity in the cells, in the cells of the animals. That is why the virus are different from the bacteria and fungi, etc. Virus are different from the bacteria and other microbes. They will grow only in the living cells only. They will grow only in the living cells, not outside the cells. They won't grow like a bread agar, chocolate agar, etc. I suppose if you see bacteria, the bacteria will grow in other media, blood agar, macang, but virus won't grow in the blood agar, macang, agar, chocolate agar, etc. Why? Because they are not living cells. They are not living cells. The blood media, blood agar, media, chocolate agar, media, macang, they are not, they only grow bacteria. But here, the viruses, they are obligate intracellular parasites. We have to use living cells for growing. We have to show the pathogenicity. We have to show the pathogenicity of these viruses in the living cells only. We have to show the pathogenicity and some uh, the some cytopathogenic effect. We have to show in the living cells only, not in the inanimate medium. It is the importance of the viruses. The difficulties in diagnosis of viral infections. It cannot be seen under light microscope. The viruses are won't see there you have to measure in the nanometers the viruses are in the, observed in the nanometers cannot be seen under light microscope light microscope is microns microns you have to observe in microns but viruses are observed in the nanometers it cannot be seen usually the main no no not uh, seen in the light microscope protein compound light microscopes are not useful for observation of the viruses only bacteria are seen under light microscope only bacteria are seen under light microscope. Only bacteria are seen under light microscope. Viruses, only one exception, that is the pox virus. Pox virus, uh, the inclusion bodies can be seen under light microscope. Pox uh, exception, that is the biggest virus. The biggest virus can be seen under light microscope. Usually, no viruses is observed under light microscope. It cannot be cultivated easily. As like bacteria, it cannot be viruses are not cultivated easily for observation of the growth, observation of the any property or any for observing for getting the vaccination. It is not easy to grow in the cultivate in the easily in the many medium. Already I told do not grow on culture media like bacterial culture media. Do not grow on the bacterial culture media. The viruses won't grow on the bacterial culture media. The treatment was not available. Some viruses uh, won't get any treatment. Many viruses uh, won't get any treatment. That is the difficulties. In the diagnosis of the viral infections. But some changes are there. What are the changes? There is a rapid techniques are available for the diagnosis. There are rapid nowadays. Rapid techniques are available for the diagnosis of viral infection. These are the difficulties we are facing uh, previously, but now. Some, uh, some changes in the situation where nowadays the DNA techniques, uh, polymerase chain reactions, uh, et cetera, available antigen detection, antibody detections uh, are available for the diagnosis of the viral infections. But usually the virus are not seen under microscope, light microscope. We have to use electron microscope for observation. For observation of the viruses, uh, we have to use electron microscope, not light microscope. For observation of the viruses, we have to use electron microscope. Usually, light microscope is uh, not useful for observation of the viruses. Only bacteria, fungi, etc. can be seen under light microscope. It is cultivation also very difficult. Cultivation also very difficult. Do not grow on the culture media. Viruses don't, do not grow on the culture medium. The treatment is also not available. These are the difficulties of the viral uh, diagnosis of the Viral infections. Very difficult for observation. Already, suppose of see bacterial diagnosis easy. Culture, culturing of the bacteria and uh, antigens, antibodies, etc. But viruses, uh, we have to grow special techniques for growing. So special techniques, special methods we have to use. What are the techniques we have to use for the diagnosis of the viral infections? First, microscopy. Microscopy means light microscopy, not useful except a pox virus that is over but electron microscope we have to use for the 
diagnosis, but it is not feasible for the diagnosis. Electron microscope also not feasible. But some other techniques like detection of viral antigens can be done. Detection of viral and virus antigens can be observed in the various uh, blood and various body fluids. Detection of the viral antigens. Detection of the viral antigens. Suppose if you see hepatitis B surface antigen can be detected. Like not, not only that, some the, suppose nowadays COVID antigen detection of the viral antigen, COVID virus antigen can be detected. Similarly, many viruses, antigens, not only antigens, antibodies also can be detected. Antigens of the viruses. There is antigens means there is surface structures, some uh, some structures of the viruses, spikes of the antigens of the some protein particles of the virus. Antigens can be detected. And next, uh, the most important, uh, tissue cultures, organ cultures, cell cultures can be used. Tissue cultures, tissue culture means they are living cells. Tissue cultures, the animals, uh, some replicating cells, uh, continuous replicating cells uh, and um, the deployed cell cultures uh, and um, the primary cell cultures uh, and monkey kidney cell cultures uh, and uh, the other, the cancer cell cell cultures uh, are useful for the detection of the viruses. Why? Because uh, the virus also will grow along with the cells. Viruses also will multiply in that cells. Some kidney of the some animal cultures, tissue culture, living cells. They are living cells. In the tissue living cells, organs, living cells, uh, it is useful for the detection of the viruses. That is the first one. Second one, the fertilized egg, today's class, fertilized ants egg, embryonated egg. Fertilized embryonated egg, embryonated hens egg, embryonated hens egg is useful for the detection of the viruses. It is a living cell, hens egg is a living cell. Fertilized hens egg, embryonated egg is a living cell. Embryonated egg is a living cell. Why? Because it contains some embryo. Embryo means live cell. Some other fluids, the yolk sac, allantoic cavity, amniotic cavity. The fluid, the embryo fluid is there inside. Everything is living cells, living. That is why the viruses can be grown in the hen's egg. Embryo is there. That is why the hen's egg is useful for the growing of the viruses. Next, laboratory animal inoculation. The animals also used for the growing of the viruses like mice, mice, mice. The, the suckling, suppose the suckling cocksucky virus will grow in the mice, infant mice, infant mice. Not only that, uh, the various various animals are used, like chimpanzees, rabbit, guinea pig, rabbit, guinea pig, and mice are used for the growing of the viruses. These are the techniques for the observation of the virus growth, virus growth. And next, uh, the detection of antibody in serum. Detection of antibody in serum the antibodies not only antigens the antibodies also can be detected any antibody any virus antibody can be detected suppose if you see herpes simplex virus antibody suppose if you see hepatitis b antibodies suppose if you see mumps antibodies suppose rabies antibodies what not hiv antibodies these antibodies also can be detected not only viral antigens the antibodies of the virus Antibodies of the virus present in the blood. Antibodies of the particularly the virus antibodies are present after infection. These antibodies also can be detected, not only antigens. These are IgG and IgM. The IgM indicates a acute infection or recent infection. IgM indicates recent or current infection or acute infection. IgG indicates the chronic infection, chronic infection. IgG indicates the chronic infection of that particular disease. These are the techniques used for the detection of the viruses. Suppose if you see microscopy, all of you, all of you know the electron microscope we have to use, electron microscope, um, not, uh, not simple microscopes are useful. This is the immune electron microscope, for electron microscope for viruses, electron microscope for viruses. My exception is light microscope light microscope inclusion bodies are detected inclusion bodies for example box virus inclusion bodies why because they are bigger they are um, that is why they can be seen visually 
the viruses are very small we have to measure in the nanometers that is why it is very difficult to see in the light microscope except uh, the bigger uh, antibodies uh, bigger um, viral particles can be seen like pox virus etc and the third one fluorescent microscope fluorescent antibody technique fluorescent microscope or antibody technique also useful for observation of the antibodies rabies antibodies fluorescent antibodies the fluorescent antibodies rabies antibodies also can be detected fluorescent antibody can be detected light microscopy the pox virus antibodies can be detected and viral antigens the precipitation technique viral antigen detections how to do the precipitation on gel for example hbsag antigen precipitation technique by using the precipitation and gel example hbsag antigen and second one immunofluorescence technique microscope immunofluorescence technique uh, the viral antigens can be detected the third one counter immunoelectrophoresis that is the counter immunoelectrophoresis technique uh, the fourth one enzyme linked immunosorbent assay enzyme linked immunosorbent assay these are the four technique uh, immunological technique uh, for the detection of the viral antigens detection of the demonstration of the viral antigens precipitation immunofluorescence counter immunoelectrophoresis and uh, elisa these are the some techniques uh, for the detection of the viral antigens next uh, coming to the isolation of the virus how to isolate laboratory animals we have to use the laboratory animals already i told we have to inject the inoculate the inoculum the infected material into the mice or some rabbit some guinea pig some uh, chimpanzees etc and we have to observe for the disease process in the animals another way important to discuss the, the hens egg we have to use the some sites we have to use the some sites of the embryonated egg what are the sites chorio allantoic membrane allantoic cavity amniotic cavity yolk sac these are the four important sites of the hens egg there are some sites is the embryo is there not only embryo surrounding the embryo there is a chorio allantoic membrane some amniotic cavity is there surrounding the embryo some allantoic cavity is there which is allantois and yolk sac yolk sac is also there for the all this material is present in the embryonated egg we have to inject the inoculum and we have to grow the viruses inside the the embryonated egg inside the why because the embryonated egg is a living cell the embryonated egg is a living cell that is why we have to use embryonated egg for growing of the viruses not only the organ cultures tissue cultures cell cultures we have to use okay for observe isolation of the virus the growth is identified by serological methods like uh, neutralization growth is identified after growth getting the growth in the various tissues and various uh, embryonic eggs etc growth is identified by by using the neutralization technique neutralization method for neutralizing the antigen by using the antibody it is called neutralization see these are the various uh, set uh, techniques virus culture embryonic egg chorio allantoic membrane allantoic cavity amniotic cavity yolk sac today we will discuss uh, all the four sites for the growing of the viruses not only that the other does, uh, viral isolation techniques like primary cell cultures deployed cell cultures and continuous cell cultures primary cell cultures deployed and secondary cell cultures and continuous cell cultures also used and animal inoculation is also there cycling mice my example for growing inoculation not only cycling mice some other animals like guinea pig rabbit chimpanzees etc also can be used for the growing of the uh, usually for embryo egg hens egg you sometimes uh, duck eggs also used duck eggs which is bigger compared with the hens egg the duck egg also usually the hens egg uh, the embryo united hens egg is used uh, it contains the embryo egg contains uh, different sites uh, we have to inoculate into that site uh, there is a different procedures for inoculating to that particular site uh, we'll discuss uh, now the sites like uh, Choreo allantoic membrane, allantoic cavity, amniotic cavity, and yolk These are the different sites. First, uh, the, uh, uh, the choreo allantoic membrane. In choreo, suppose the inoculum is inoculated into the choreo allantoic membrane, we can observe the visible lesions <coughs> in the, on the surface of the choreo allantoic membrane. And the inoculum is inoculated into the choreo allantoic membrane. After a few days, we will observe the 
visible lesions on the chorioallantoic membrane. These visible lesions are called pox, P O C K S pox. What is meant by pox? Pox. Each pox is nothing but one infectious virus particle. Each pox is nothing but one infectious virus particle. This infectious viral particle is heaped up and forms one growth like a lesion. That lesion, visible lesion, is called pox. P O C K S pox. These parks are observed on the chorioallantoic membrane. Suppose if you procedure done on the chorioallantoic membrane, you will observe the visible lesions on the parks on the can chorioallantoic membrane. These uh, visible lesions are called parks. Uh, the example um, of viruses uh, which form parks are variola virus and vaccinia virus. Variola virus and vaccinia virus. The variola virus and vaccinia virus will produce Pox on the coriolantic membrane, variola virus and vaccine virus. Not only that, herpes simplex virus, herpes zoster virus will also form pox on the coriolantic membrane. Not only variola and vaccine, herpes simplex, herpes simplex virus also forms pox on the coriolantic membrane. This is the first one, first site for the embryonated hen cell. The second site is uh, the allantoic cavity. The allantoic cavity, which produces viruses, influenza virus, and also paramyxo viruses. Influenza virus and paramyxo. These viruses, allantoic cavity contains some rich amount of that fluid, which is uh, important for the growing of the viruses. That is why <coughs> rich yielding of the rich yielding of the virus will grow in the allantoic cavity. A rich amount of virus will grow in the allantoic cavity. Rich amount of Virus will grow in the allantoic cavity, particularly influenza virus and para influenza virus. Influenza virus <coughs> and para influenza virus will grow in the allantoic cavity. Next, amniotic cavity. In amniotic cavity, not rich yielding, only primary isolation of the virus. Only primary isolation of the influenza virus and para influenza virus will grow in the amniotic cavity. The amniotic cavity is nothing but the surrounding, the immediate surrounding of the embryo, the immediate surrounding layer of the embryo is called amniotic cavity. Immediate surrounding layer of the embryo of the egg is called embryonic and egg is called amniotic cavity. In the amniotic cavity, which is a layer, that layer is called amniotic cavity. When this virus, suppose the virus teraclum is inoculated into the amniotic cavity, it is for the primary isolation of the virus like influenza virus primary virus isolation of the influenza virus next yolk sac in the yolk sac uh, not only viruses uh, some viruses uh, chlamydia and rickettsia will grow chlamydia and rickettsia will grow in the yolk sac these are the various viruses will grow in the various sites of the embryonated hens egg embryonated hens egg this embryonated hens egg was first used for Cultivation of viruses by Goodpatcher and Burnett. These are the first to discover the embryo unit technique by Goodpatcher and Burnett in 1931. The cultivation of viruses in organized tissues like chick embryo necessitates a different type of approach. For all practical purposes, they all themselves behave as a tissue culture. It is nothing but living cell. That is why we have to use embryo unit egg. First, Goodpatcher and Burnett. Used for the cultivation of viruses by, by this uh, embryonated hen's egg. The process of cultivation of viruses uh, in embryonated eggs depends on the type of egg which is used. The egg used for cultivation must be sterile and the shell should be intact and healthy. The egg should be sterile. It should be 10 days below 10 days old and it should be sterile. No bacterial contamination, no other virus contamination, and the shell should be intact. And healthy. The shell should be intact and healthy. It should be healthy. Then only we have to use embryonated and sick. See Burnett. The Burnett is the director of Paul Institute, 1944 to 1965. 1944 to 1965. The McFarlane Burnett in the laboratory in the 1950s. 
He was experimenting on the influenza virus <coughs> genetics using the developing hand cell. Using the developing hand cell, McFarlane Burnett was experimenting on influenza virus genetics using the development of the hand cell. See, the Burnett was confirmed by the award of the 1960 Nobel Prize and Peter Medaver for the discovery of the immunological tolerance, a discovery in the immunology of the minor importance compared with the clonal selection theory. Clonal selection theory is the um, award given, Nobel Prize given to the Burnett and Peter Medaver for the discovery of the immunological tolerance. The embryonic eggs are suitable for growing of the viruses. Inaccurate eggs are candied daily to see the chick embryos inside. The technique, first, what are the technique we have to follow? We have to follow the some technique. The technique is candling. First, we have to do the candling by using the illuminated light. By <coughs> using the illuminated light, we have to observe the whether the virus, whether the embryo is live or not. Suppose they, some struck some vessels, some um, the embryo is moving, etc. Suppose if you see that is uh, life. Suppose the embryo is not moving, blood vessels are not good, and there is no eye-like structure is present. That indicates that that is virus is uh, the embryo is uh, dead. That is why we have to do candling daily to see the embryos inside. Mm -hmm. We have to do candling. We have to observe the cat. We have to observe the embryo inside daily. Otherwise, we can't uh, do the procedure. First step is the candling. We have to do. X are used for mass vaccine production in influenza. <coughs> Animals and chicken embryo were the first method that was used to cultivate virus. This method is rarely used as it is not convenient. However, when preparing for bulk virus, the chicken embryo is useful for preparing for bulk viruses this method is very very useful see how the eggs are inoculated how the method is using inoculation is one procedure like allen type cavity etc the chick embryos and animals are used for mass vaccine production and it was done particularly for the influenza virus during pandemic of the influenza the egg based vaccines were prepared Advan what is the advantage of this x these eggs provide a convenient space saving incubator for many kinds of animal viruses different viruses can be injected into an egg at a different sites and the egg can be easily observed for viral replication throughout the development of the chicken embryo that is why we have to use the embryo united hand egg we can observe the development of the virus inside suppose if you want to see any cytopathic can effect you can break the egg and we can harvest the the various sites uh, and observe. Suppose if you want to see the coriolantic membrane after breaking, we can observe the pox, EOCK pox, and particularly variola vaccinia, mm -hmm. viral cytopathogenic effect pox can be observed on the coriolantic membrane. Not only variola and vaccinia, the herpes simplex virus virus pox, pox also produced on the coriolantic membrane. That is the advantage of the embryonated uh, fertile X. The, what is the importance, other importance? The isolation and cultivation of many birds and mammalian viruses, ideal receptacle for virus to grow, embryo index are ideal receptacle for growing of the virus, sterile wide range of tissues and fluids. It is a sterile, the egg is <laughs> sterile. The embryo index egg is a sterile. All of you know that without break any tissue, shell break, uh, suppose that is, the, that is nothing but sterile one. That is why the very, very cheap and uh, useful for growing of the viruses. There is a wide range of tissues are there inside. Elantai cavity, amniotic cavity, yolk sac, corial elantai membrane. Like that, various tissues are available inside the embryo united egg. That is why it is a sterile and wide range of tissues are available. That is why the embryo united egg is used. The cost is much less, very, very less cost. Maintenance also easy. Less labor, readily available. Less labor and readily available. That is why these embryo united eggs are used for the <coughs> cultivation of the viruses cultivation of the or inoculation of the viruses it is also free from bacteria and many latent viruses it is free from bacteria it is a sterile 
that is the bacteria are not present inside free from septic and non specific factors of defense specific non specific factors are also not present inside and immunity is not playing any role inside that is why it is very very useful for growing of the virus specific and non specific defense factors are not available inside that is why embryonic eggs are used for growing of the viruses see how the what is the structure of the embryonic egg see there is a shell is there shell membrane is there albumin is there coriolan tag membrane is there embryo is there surrounding the embryo amniotic cavity is there elantic cavity is there yolk sac is there see these are the various sites of embryonated egg these are the various sites of embryonated egg the virus suppose we want to grow the viruses herpes simplex virus pox virus rau sarcoma virus we have to use the coriolantic membrane herpes simplex virus pox virus and rau sarcoma virus we have to use the coriolantic membrane for influenza virus mumps virus we have to use the amniotic inoculation amniotic cavity inoculation and herpes simplex virus we have to use the yolk sac inoculation herpes simplex virus yolk sac inoculation and influenza virus mumps virus newcastle disease virus and avian adeno virus we have to use the elantic cavity inoculation elantic cavity inoculation. so these are the various sites various methods of inoculation of viruses various sets of sites of inoculation of the virus under the utility of the x see the structure structure of the embryonic x which contains coriolantic membrane amniotic cavity inoculation elantic cavity inoculation and yolk sac inoculation these are the important sites four sites of inoculation of the embryonated egg these are the four sites of the inoculation of the sites of the embryonated egg coriolantic membrane amniotic inoculation yolk sac inoculation and elantic cavity inoculation coriolantic membrane amniotic inoculation yolk sac inoculation and elantic cavity inoculation these are the four important sites of the egg and embryonic egg so that we can inoculate we can grow the virus in all the four sites of the embryonated egg see roots of injecting the fertilized egg see one person is injecting the the virus through syringe into the egg inoculum that is called inoculum see with various roots of various sites how the site to into which virus can be inoculated it is a diagram is there sites into which virus can be inoculated the amniotic cavity is there yolk sac is there coriolantic membrane and elantic cavity is there by roots various roots uh, we can inoculate various sites so that uh, easily you can pass through that site elantic cavity coriolantic membrane yolk sac and amniotic cavity these are the various uh, roots of injecting the hens egg hens fertilized and embryonated hens egg See similarly the uh, embryonic egg cell injecting into the amniotic cavity, injecting into the embryo, injecting into the coriolantic membrane, injecting into the egg sac, injecting into the coriolantic membrane, injecting into the yolk sac. See different sites of inoculation of the embryonic egg. Different sites of the inoculation of the embryonic hence egg. Different sites of inoculation of the embryo. See cultivation. To cultivate viruses in the eggs, the procedure adapted should be very simple. The eggs are kept in the incubator, and uh, embryos of seven to twelve days old are used. Embryos of egg eggs of seven to twelve days old. Embryos of seven to twelve days old are used. The egg containing embryo usually has an air space at the larger end. The position of the sac is first determined. The position of the sac is. Uh, First, determine then only we can inoculate into the egg. We have to begin in the exercise with the candling egg. We have to candling. We have to observe the. We have to observe the eye. Candling is the process of holding a strong light above or below the egg to observe the embryo. To observe the. The candling lamp consisting of a strong electric bulb covered by a plastic or aluminium container that has a handle and an aperture. The egg is placed against this. 
if you don't have a candle lamp improvise try using a torch light you can use the torch light also for observation of the blood vessel blood vessel structures and eye that is a black structure which is seen that is called eye of that uh, embryo unit ring you all the things uh, we have to see daily that is called candling candling of the egg candling means the healthiness of the embryo whether the embryo is live or not we can see otherwise uh, without candling we can't observe the live embryo present in the egg marking the inoculum site we have to mark the we have to mark the hello ah jab jab ab class at 11:30 class avanga vasta 11:30 ki vasta 11:30 ki vasta okay marking the inoculum site hold the blunt end of the egg against the aperture of the candling lamp and note the position of the head of the embryo turn the egg a quarter turn away from the head draw a line on the shell marking the edge of the egg sac draw an x approximately 2 mm above this line the x marks the inoculum site that is the marking of the inoculum site of the embryo in the egg what is the material needed for egg inoculation it is a 9 to 10 days old we have to use egg shell candling and and then egg should be placed in the egg rack with the inoculum site uppermost egg shell punch we have to take and a cotton wool and 70% alcohol solution in water syringe 1 ml syringe we have to use a needle we have to use the needle is 25 gauze or 16 mm gauze and then tape also sticky tape also we have to use inoculum and then, and then discarding tray these are the materials needed for egg inoculation and inoculation of the elantai cavity how to what to inoculate inoculation of the elantai cavity use cotton wool and 70% alcohol to swab the end of the eggs to be inoculated allow the alcohol to evaporate swab the egg shell punch with 70% alcohol solution place used cotton wool in discard tray pierce a hole in the end of the egg at the marked inoculum site attach needle to 1 ml syringe draw inoculum into 1 ml syringe elantai cavity keep the needle syringe vertical place the needle through the hole in the egg shell the needle will need to penetrate approximately 6 mm into the egg to reach the elantai cavity inject a 0.1 ml of inoculum into the egg withdraw the needle from the egg seal the hole in the shell with a stationary tape or melted wax discard the used needles and syringes place the inoculated eggs into second incubator check the temperature and humidity of the incubator daily piercing the hole in the action a dental drill can be used if available mm. not available there is some other material are used in most laboratories a tool called excel punch can be used improvised using materials that are cheap and easy to procure that is called excel mm. punch we have to in fact for the before inoculation we have to punch the excel the excel means very small amount of shell is broke through that punch that is why in absence of dental drill we can use excel punch excel punch these are the various routes of inoculation already i told in the diagram i mean coriolan tac membrane elantai cavity amniotic cavity yolk sac these are the various sites of inoculation of the embryo united x and various viruses also inoculated to the various in the sites of the embryo united x so that we can viruses can be grown in the embryo united x inoculating the specimens the rest of the embryo then gets exposed and ready for use where a suspension to be cultivated is taken in dropper and gently spread over the exposed embryo after inoculation is thus completed the open area of the shell is sealed eggs are incubated for one week as in hatching we have to incubate for one week after inoculum is inoculated the virus particles infect the membrane at random and create a pock marked appearance against the transparent background this indicates the viral growth this indicates the viral particularly and coriolan tac membrane there is a formation of a pocket pox the coriolan tac membrane the pox are produced not, not only the herpes simplex pox where variola and vaccinia viruses will grow pox on the coriolan tac membrane little holes are drilled through the eggshell for infection of the coriolan tac membrane and fungal cultures also can be sometimes a user for the growing of the viruses they provide complex environment including the phagocytic cells to study fungal host pathogen interaction 
that is why we can use the uh, embryo dense egg for the fungal growth fungal growth see this is the method of you know, drilling of the the shell egg shell and inoculation piercing the shell with the needle piercing the shell with the needle injecting the infective material with the needle these are the various sites overview of inoculating sites yolk sac influenza vaccine development in the fertilized egg influenza vaccine traditional methods influenza examining the infected vex vaccine how vaccines are produced in egg ex in egg culture flu viruses are injected into chicken egg embryos where they multiply after several days of incubation a mission opens the egg and nourish the virus which is then purified and chemically killed on average it takes one or two eggs to produce a single dose of annual flu vaccine in a cell culture the virus is grown in animal or human cells which are available in unlimited supply see we can prepare the reassortment vaccines reassortment vaccines for influenza produce vaccine how the vaccine is producing the egg is inoculated with a mixture of the epidemic strain red color epidemic strain and standard strain plus standard strain it can both can replicate in the chicken eggs both strains replicate themselves that is a epidemic strain and standard strain and so that there is the formation of reassortment of genes they do not uh, so they their genetic and material becomes mixed up producing hybrid viruses that is called reassortment of the influenza vaccine we have to prepare by mixing with the epidemic strain plus a standard strain red plus green see egg is as a tool for developing the influenza vaccine eggs are used in mass scale development of a see there is a, a big method embryo eggs at 10 to 12 days being inoculated by automatic missionary first a larger needle punches a hole in the shell and second smaller needle injects a seed into the elanthid cavity of the egg followed by incubation for 2 to 3 days it takes less than 10 seconds to inoculate a row of eggs see this is the automatic missionary sometimes the eggs are not uh, vaccines are not useful if they are allergic that you should not give those who are allergic to the eggs see you have to follow the bio safety procedures for growing of the preparation of the vaccine vaccines see this is the nothing but the egg inoculation egg inoculation how the virus will grow in the various sites of the and say embryo united and say embryo united and say we have to follow all these uh, sites and growing of the vaccines in the embryo united and say thank you thank you very much hello ah ah le le madam le madam you know ah
in the meeting with Alpha. In the meeting And then Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.